The Netflix series on Jeffrey Dahmer is a true crime drama, so you're probably not surprised that for the most part it sticks to fact over fiction. But some of the scenes are so shocking, you might still be second guessing whether or not they could actually happen in real life. Here's a rundown of all the moments that were true. In one creepy scene in the series, straight after putting on The Exorcist 3, Jeffrey Dahmer tells Tracy Edwards he wants to hear his heart because he's going to eat it. In court, Tracy Edwards confirmed this did happen in real life. As we watch Dahmer grow up and try to fit in at school, there's one scene where he gifts one of his teachers a glass with tadpoles in it. This is based on real events, and Dahmer did get annoyed when the tadpoles were handed over to another classmate. Also, he did kill the tadpoles by putting motor oil in the glass. In the flashbacks, Dahmer disturbs several of his classmates when he sneaks into yearbook photos in which he doesn't belong, earning the special opprobrium of the National Honor Society. These subtle moments demonstrate how much of a loner Dahmer was. In real life, he had nothing to do with the group, but he did manage to sneak into its photo. His face has since been blacked out of it. In the series, Dahmer steals a mannequin from a department store, having waited until it was closed and everyone had gone home. His grandmother throws it away, leading to a rage-filled outburst from Dahmer. In fact, Dahmer did steal a mannequin from a department store in Milwaukee. Dahmer would soon progress onto living partners who he met in gay bathhouses. In the show, Jeffrey Dahmer is seen visiting the club 219 and picking up multiple victims before bringing them back to his apartment. Club 219 was a real gay bar in Milwaukee, and Jeffrey Dahmer did visit it. However, the club is closed today. Its popularity began to decline after it was revealed to the public that Dahmer often picked up victims there. It's true, Jeffrey Dahmer did often show The Exorcist 3 to people he brought back to his apartment. In a chilling interview, he said the movies, quote, got him into the mood to commit his crimes. In the series, Dahmer's first murder happens on the spur of the moment. He eventually bludgeons a hitchhiker with a dumbbell before strangling him to death. He then dismembers the body and takes it away from his home in garbage bags, only to be pulled over by the cops. Though they know he's drunk, they still send him home. This particular incident is largely drawn from facts. Police officers even shone their flashlights at the bags containing the young man's body parts. However, Dahmer was able to talk himself out of the trouble convincing the officers he was merely out for a drive and was upset about his parents' impending divorce. He was sent home without being arrested or facing further questioning. Now this is one of the only moments which is based on fact, but has a big element of fiction added in. In the series, we see Dahmer get a job at a blood donation center and take home some of the donations. Now it's true he got this job, but nothing suggests he ever stole the donations from there. In the show, there's a scene where Dahmer is arrested following an indecent exposure at a fair. This actually happened in real life. In August 1982, Dahmer was convicted for indecent exposure at a Wisconsin State Fair Park. He received a $50 fine for what happened, where reportedly 25 people were present, including women and children. In one shocking scene, we see 14-year-old Conorak Synthesimphone escape Dahmer's apartment covered in blood after being drugged. Dahmer tells police they are boyfriends and Conorak is an adult. Now this happened in real life. And it's true, neighbor Glenda Cleveland was there and phoned police afterwards to raise her concerns further. Nothing came of the report. After killing Tony Hughes, Dahmer is seen telling his sister he's quote in the vortex and the family shouldn't continue to look for him. It's been reported Dahmer did call the family members of his victims and tell them to stop looking for their relatives. One particularly stomach churning moment in the show is when we see Dahmer hand over a meat sandwich to his neighbor, Glenda Cleveland. This is based on real events and Dahmer's neighbors do think they've been offered human meat by him before. 
The incident actually involved a neighbor called Pamela Bass, whose experiences have been combined with those of the real Glenda Cleveland to create the character we see on the show. And she confirmed in an interview, Dahmer did give her a sandwich once. I have probably eaten someone's body part. Rita Isbell is a sister of Errol Lindsay, one of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims. Rita famously gave an emotional victim impact speech in court when she was face to face with Dahmer. What we saw in the Netflix show is almost exactly how it was in real life. I'm mad. This is how you act when you are out of control. Whilst in prison, Dahmer reportedly had a sick sense of humor. He would tell jokes about cannibalism, taunt prisoners, and tell them, quote, I bite. He would also mold his prison food to resemble body parts and would use ketchup to mimic blood. The show got this part 100% right. In the show, Dahmer's father convinces him to join the army. Things don't go as planned there and he is ultimately honorably discharged. In reality, Dahmer was indeed enlisted in the US Army. He served from 1979 to 1981 and trained as a medic, and he was stationed with 68th Armored Regiment in Baumholder, Germany. He was ultimately honorably discharged because of his continuing problems with alcohol. Now one thing the series does not include about his time in the army are the accusations lodged by two of his fellow soldiers, Preston Davis and Billy Joe Capshaw, both of whom claim Dahmer sexually assaulted them. The motivating event for Dahmer's life seems to be the discovery of a dead possum, but it's not long before his father, wishing to connect with his son in some meaningful way, begins to help his son taxidermy the various creatures they find on the road. Carl Wallstrom, a forensic psychiatrist who interviewed Dahmer, confirmed this to be true. He also revealed some of the more macabre true details behind this incident. The two would often bleach the hair and skin from the bodies of rodents which were found under the house. From the first episode, Dahmer's father wants to believe his son's psychopathy is due to a hernia operation from when he was a child. He tells the police his son was never the same and he believes it was due to the surgery, perhaps from too much anesthesia. While it remains unclear to what extent the surgery was responsible for his change of behavior, it is true he had the operation when he was four years old. According to his parents, his behavior changed noticeably after the procedure, and he went from being a happy child to being very withdrawn. Now while this series is not a documentary, nor meant to be 100% factually accurate, they did manage to get a lot of the details correct. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. We have tons of more videos just like this in the works. And let us know down in the comments what show you would like to see us cover next. Thanks for watching.